but we're really excited to have, oh my God, we have someone on the stage. Say hello to Congo Sanchez. For those of you who know, um, my favorite band is Thievery Corporation, and uh, I'm so lucky that I got the chance to get the drummer of Thievery Corporation here to join us. So again, so pumped to have you here, and we'll be hearing from Congo also later tonight after um, Founder Friday to close out the night. Thank you for being here. Okay, time for wearable tech fashion show. Should I change my voice for this one? I think it would be a great idea to talk about the wearable tech fashion show with an accent. No, I won't. But I don't know about you, I'm pumped. Uh, so we're going to see five incredible women who are going to show you what they've created fusing, fusing technology with fashion and beauty. Um, we will be seeing the Havdig invisible bike helmet all the way from Sweden. We will have Linda Franco and her her music making jacket all the way from Mexico City, which I love. Rupa Vasudevan, who is the creator of Hate Couture. She flew in from New York. Who's from New York? Yes. You guys are really quiet New Yorkers. Um, we're going to see Kristen, who's the founder of Sensory, who came in from the Bay Area. And last but not least, we will hear from Katia Vega, who we are so lucky, who joined us from Brazil. Linda Franco from Mexico City, join us on the stage. Woo! Hi. Oh, I need the clicker. Oh. Hi. Um, I'm here to talk about wearable technology. My name is Li my name is Linda, and I am from Machina Wearable Technology. <laughs> Oops. Talking about technology. This is tricky. It's, it's frozen. Okay, so what's Machina? Machina is a wearable technology based in Mexico City, and we've had a vision for over a year now to create machine-like clothing, to create wearable machines. So wearable technology has been existing since the 1980s. However, it has always been missing a crucial component, design. As you can see in this picture, we can see that it has always been developed mostly by engineers. So, no offense, please. So <laughs> the technology has always been um, bulky, not functional, and I don't know about you, but I wouldn't go on a date with a guy like this. So um, a machine has different kinds of products, t-shirts, jackets, and hoodies, but we're, I'm going to present to you one of our most successful products, and that's the MIDI controller jacket. Basically, it's a jacket that makes music through your body movements. So what's the problem? A lot of people ask me, how did you come up with the idea? So I went one day with my co-founders to this concert, which we paid $60, and we just saw this guy pecking around on his computer. And we're like, what the hell? For all we know, he could be playing solitary, and we wouldn't even know. So the act of performance has been losing through time. We wanted to change that. And that's how the MIDI controller jacket was born. This is how our first prototype looked. It was all the wires upside down and stuff. And we were trying to define what would make us different from other wearable technology companies. We wanted to make technology completely invisible. So this is what it looked like, sort of the beginning. And it's important for you to know that we develop our own technology. We have even created our own flexible Arduino. The, at the beginning of this year, we raised $77,000 on Kickstarter. This gave us the possibility to improve the technology of the jacket, including its designs. Nowadays, the technology, which will be delivered to all of those who pre-ordered, will be delivered in December. And the technology is completely invisible. You can go on a date, you can go dancing, and then you can jam in a party. So this is what the jacket looks like now. So 
I'm going to do a little demo, but just so you know, I'm not a musician. I'm just a performer. I'm in charge of all those awesome stuff in the company like administration and contracts. So I'll do my best. And this is a prototype. So as you can see, here's a volume in the zipper. I know. Tricky. I know what you're thinking. This sort of music is what crack-headed people listen to. <laughs> but it's important for you to know that you can personalize the music however you want to, OK? So you will be able to change the sound. You will be able to personalize it through a mobile app, iPad, and iPhone, and Android. And well, basically, this is a prototype. Um, you will be able to turn it on. Like the final jacket, you will turn it on like this. Right now, I'm sort of changing the pitch, rising the pitch, lowering the pitch, and, well, I'm not a musician. That's about it. So, bye. <laughs> All right, up next, we have Kristen from Sensory. Join us on the stage. Hi, everybody. My name's Kristen Neidlinger, and I'm the founder of Sensory. We create therapeutic biomedia that monitors your body. Um, and we create designs that give you biofeedback to how you're feeling and also express that out into the world. We call this extimacy, externalized intimacy. Um, we make wearable technology and interactive installations. Um, and we really want to animate your sensory nervous system. Like, how can you make your body bigger than it is? How can you expand? your nervous system out into the universe, perhaps. Um, so what we focus on is the sympathetic nervous system. And that is really your fight or flight response. Like when you get nervous, have anxiety, or panic. What happens to your body? Your heart races, um, you get sweaty. <laughs> um, your tongue swells all these different aspects that cue you into your nervous and maybe you should calm down and relax. And we wonder how media could help you with this. How could technology be therapeutic and help calm you down, bring you back into a homeostasis? Um, so where this came from was my master's thesis and how to design wearable technology for people with sensory processing disorder. And that's a hypersensitivity from ADHD to autism. How can we create wearable products that would calm people down and help them integrate into society. Focusing on heartbeat, we develop sensors, um, focusing on heartbeat, sweat, excitement, humidity sensors, um, personal space with proximity, and breath. Also animating movement. Um, so our first product that we'll be showing tonight is the Mood Sweater. And the sensor we developed is called the galvanic extimacy responder. So it's technically like a lie detector test. It reads how you're feeling, and then we take that graph data and display it externally um, with a visual light display. And the collar shape, is a, it's a bold design, so the color actually reflects back onto you, as well as being an external blush to tell everybody how you're feeling. Um, here's our effective palette. So when you're calm and relaxed, you're more blue-green. And as you get more excited, nervous, or in love, it goes up to red. And we just added white. So when you're nervous for a while, all of a sudden, shoop, you, you go into nirvana, ecstatic. Um, and then from there, we've developed two. And now I'm really interested in how these wearables respond to each other. So how you, the wearer is responding 
to the self and the other, and then how we can create a game with that. Maybe. There we go. So the next design is the heart sync, and this reads heartbeats and communicates your heart rate, heart rate to another person. And the goal of this game ah, <laughs> is to synchronize your heart rate. So when your heart rate actually synchronizes with the other person, we have a red and white swirl that tells you you've won the game. So this is a new playful way to experience your body and other people try to communicate together. And now I'd like to show a demo of some of our designs. We have two mood sweaters. Thank you very much. A little hot. Oh my god, my heart actually is racing right now. <clears throat> All right, focus. Next, we have the Hobdig 
hold on, <laughs> bike helmet. And we're gonna show you a little video about the helmet. Cue the video, please. So regarding this helmet, by the way, um, the founders of Havdig are from Sweden and we did invite them to join us. They are unable to join us, so instead they're gonna show us this video and we're gonna have the opportunity then to see um, a model a version of the helmet and which will be joining us on stage. It was pretty interesting to, you can watch this video while I'm chatting, uh, to take this helmet through the airport uh, because the helmet actually has a CO2 capsule. So security held me for quite some time to make sure I wasn't gonna blow anything up on the plane. And here we have Sherna <clears throat> here wearing the bike helmet herself. As you can tell, it probably doesn't even look like she's wearing anything, which is probably why they call it invisible. So I don't know about you, but I love my hair and I should be biking in San Francisco. But the one reason I don't is because it would ruin my hair, those helmets. And I'm not kidding you, because I do have a bike, but I do have a helmet. I never, ever, ever bike for that reason. So when this is available in the US, right now it is not USDA certified or whatever certification it needs to be in the US. Um, I don't know about you, but I will be getting one. And in talking to the founders, that what they explained to me is, I mean, it's so fashionable that it's made the runway in Europe. And on top of that, uh, people are buying it in droves. Uh, and it, it, what it, as you saw from the video, what happens is you hit impact just like you would in a car. Uh, and, you, and essentially it's an airbag and it covers your entire head. Uh, and it's actually deemed safer, uh, given the, the cushioning that it provides, safer than a regular bike helmet. So when I finally do get around to biking in San Francisco, probably one of the dangerous cities to be biking in, the hills, the crazy drivers, I am one of those crazy drivers, um, I look forward to wearing this awesome helmet. Give it up. <laughs> Next up, we have uh, Rupa Vasudevan's project called Hate Couture. Uh, we're lucky enough that she came in and she also brought a sample of the dress, which will be coming on stage. Um, I'm excited to bring you my project Hate Couture today. Hate Couture is a series of high fashion garments created from the analysis of the usage and context of hate speech on the internet. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about what that means right now. 
Um, so I'm fascinated by the use of hate speech in general because I think it says a lot about how we treat each other and society. Uh, but lately I've been examining particularly how hate speech is used on the internet. In real life, hate speech is a universal social taboo. We don't use it and we feel awkward and wrong when we hear it used. Uh, but the anonymity of the internet enables people online to use this language in a way where they don't face the traditional social consequences of saying it to somebody's face. And I was really interested in looking at that. So I decided to scrape hate speech from the internet. Um, I chose three social media sites to start out with. Twitter for the sheer volume of content that I was gonna get, as well as the fleeting nature of what was posted. Reddit for its often controversial nature, uh, but also to get lengthier commentary and discussion. And YouTube for its reputation as being the lowest of the low in terms of internet comments. I chose four demographics that you see right now to screen for, um, and they all have a reputation of having had to fight to be accepted in American society, which I felt was really important. Um, and as you can also see, I chose uh, target words to scrape for. Um, these words are universally seen as uh, derogatory and defamatory towards these demographics. And finally, I chose a hue to represent each group uh, that was based on histor historical and cultural significance to the community. Um, so for each instance of hate speech collected, meaning for each comment or post, I use natural language processing and sentiment analysis to assign a sentiment score to the statement. Um, that, that sentiment score was then used to put each instance on a five shade spectrum of the hue that was associated with the demographic. The lighter the color, the uh, lower the score, and the, uh, the more benign, uh, educational, out of context, or reappropriative the language was. And the darker the color gets, the higher the the score, meaning the usage is closer to its original disparaging, violent, or otherwise hateful context. Uh, I knew I wanted to build a wearable right off the bat, but um, you know, to me, wearable data viz often serves to humanize the data in a way that most other representations don't. But I wasn't really sure what the output was going to be until I started looking at the volume of data that I was collecting. It was tens and thousands of instances were coming in in every scrape. And I started thinking about it in terms of yardages of fabric. How much fabric could I print with the amount of data that I was collecting? So that's exactly what I did. Um, I visualized a cumulative collection of hate speech over a week onto cotton silk. Uh, each half inch square on the fabric represents a single instance of hate speech on the internet. The pattern is not repetitive and the total length of the fabric correlates to the total amount of text collected. Um, so here are the final uh, lengths of fabric. Um, and in case you're not accustomed to working with clothes, this is a lot of fabric. A lot of people in fashion were actually telling me that in most cases, this would be enough to build an entire seasonal collection for each one. So it was gonna be really challenging to get it all into one garment. I worked with fashion designers from the demographics attacked to create one garment, like I said, out of all of the fabric that was printed that was, that was inspired by the language itself. So for instance, you'll see that the garment that Megan is wearing right now, uh, it was, it, it's representing the word cunt, which is a slur often used against women, and the clothing was designed by a woman designer named Avery Reed. Um, the garment uses the entire 8.5 lengths of fabric that you saw earlier, and in the design, you can see that the collar is very high, almost obscure her face, but the bodice and bottom are very tight, revealing, and highly sexualized. Uh, this is a representation of how women are seen to a large segment of society today, and it's what uh, Avery thinks of when she hears the slur. Thank you so much for your time today. If you have any questions or want to get in touch with me about the project afterwards, please feel free to do so. Super inspirational, I love that. Thank you so much, Rupa. It's very thoughtful. Um, yeah, I'm not that creative. I feel very underaccomplished again. Anyway, moving on, we're going to bring to you from Brazil, Katia Vega, who I've been raving about mm, for the last 48 hours. We're gonna see her do a, a, a number with her blinky blinky eyelashes. It's gonna move a drone into the air. And following that, we're gonna do a little bit of pika, pika. aqua DJing. Uh, and with that, as we set up, um, what we know about Katya is that, woof, hold on one second, I'm getting pushed out, it's all good. Um, so from what we learned from Katya is that beauty doesn't have to you know, live in just makeup. Beauty can live in technology, and we didn't expect our wearable tech fashion show 
to also include these beauty products. So we're really excited to have the opportunity to see the, <laughs> to see this, that's okay, to see, to see uh, Katya show off her wares. Um, she's also, by the way, wearing a conductive hairpiece. I don't exactly know what that means, so I'm gonna let her explain that to us. Katya, are you ready? All right, let's go. Let's show her a round of applause. Hi, everybody. How are you? <laughs> so this, as you can see, I, I am blinking and I turn it on. Just with my eyelashes, I have these conductive eyelashes and when I just blink, I have this flying. So if you want, I, you can see it flying. So let me blink. Ah, oh, sorry. <laughs> okay, let's try it again. So let's blink. <laughs> yeah, I need to practice my controlling eye. <laughs> but I'm doing this with um, just makeup, just having my eyes blinking and doing like that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's great. <laughs> so let me explain you a little more about this. Uh, so Im just imagine that you can just blink and turn on the lights, or just move with your fingernails and you can open a door. So it's just, just what we used to think when you were kind of kids and with having special powers. Because I was having this idea because we, ha we all have this uh, human agency that is how we can control our body and how we could, with voluntary movements, we can understand our body and we can use that as an interface for moving objects, for example. So and I had a lo another motivation that is just, I am just a girl. I would like to wear or use wearables in everyday objects, like for example, makeup, or maybe fingernails. As you can see, my fingernails have special shapes and special powers. So I don't want to be outside the street looking kind of a cyborg or a Robocop or something like that. I want just to be me, having my own style and as a, as a girl or a woman 2.0, as maybe you are also like that, I would like to have my per own personality. Uh, so I created this pro project that it's, it's my, actually it's my PhD project. Uh, this is conductive makeup. Uh, we use conductive eye, uh, eyeliner and also we chemically metallize these fake eyelashes. So it works like a switch. So each time I, I blink, it will levitating things or turning all the lights or anything that you can want to do just with your makeup. And also I have this other project that are these nails. In these nails I embedded some small chip that is an RFID so I can interact with different kind of environments. Uh, so this is my project. I'm a PhD student at Pucurio University in Brazil. And I, I wanted to show that to you, to know what you are, you are thinking, to having more ideas. It's a great opportunity to be here in Guman 2.0 with all these creative minds, with, uh, having all these ideas, and also that would like, to, as me maybe, to have wearables that you can use and without being a Robocop or something like that. <laughs> so thank you very much. I will show you now. Uh, the next project that it's aqua digging. So what we are doing in this project is with our fingernails, each time I, let's go here. <laughs> so, it's, 
So each time I put my fingernails close to the aqua digi. Oh. So, okay. But guys, uh, actually, as you can see, I am not a musician. So I need some refers. We have Congo from, uh, from, from Tiberi Corporation. So he will be our aqua DJ tonight. So let's go, Congo. <laughs> <laughs> 